that thing makes my soul smile That thing made me so damn proud Now lay your head down on a pillow Turn the lights on real low I want you to say my name it's the official Robin Banks and I'm back with another video. I hesitated to record this video. Like I'm not making this story to bash anybody, anyone that's involved. I just want to make this story so some some people could learn from where I went wrong in a situation or like they can get hints to red flags when they're in a situation with somebody. I'm not the only person who went through something like this. I'm not going to be the last woman. Everyone been dumb in love before. I felt like I was really dumb like I'm so embarrassed but over time as I got over the situation I realized like every relationship is a learning experience and I will never make the same mistakes I made before if you see me looking down it's because I wrote some notes I'm gonna include receipts in the video so I met this guy I'm not gonna give the year I met him but I met him in March right and the way I met him is so funny so me and my friend Nina we was at Rocco's Tacos if you if you're from Brooklyn you know where Rocco's Tacos is so she works around the area so I don't remember where I was coming from but I told her like yo I'm downtown meet me at Rocco's we're gonna get, get some drinks or whatever and then she was like all right cool so we went to Rocco's Tacos so we there she like I'm about to call my bro so he can meet us because he in this area like he from this area I'm about to tell him to pull up on us so I'm like all right cool so she was on FaceTime with the bro with her bro I'm gonna just call him the bro <laughs> she was on FaceTime with the bro and she was like oh yeah I'm with my friend I'm with Robin we had Rocco's come meet us and then she put me in a camera the bro was like oh hi friend I, I like low-key trying to talk to me but it wasn't really nothing so basically he was pulling up for me and he's like, I'm going to bring my man. So he brought his mans for Nina. So they come to Rocco's Tacos. Um, bro is, he pulls up. He sits in the middle of us. So it's me, bro, my friend Nina. And then his friend was mad distant all the way like on the other side. And he was on his phone. So I'm like, what's up with your friend? Like it was a situation that happened earlier that day. And I guess he really, the friend really had an attitude about it. I'm like, all right, cool. So mind you. The bro was supposed to be talking to me, but I wasn't really that interested in bro. Like, we was talking as friends, we was having group discussions, but I wasn't really that interested in, in bro. Um, Some minutes passed or whatever, and friend comes, and then he starts talking to us or whatever. Uh, uh, so we start drinking, da-da-da. So I look at the friend, and I'm like, I know you from somewhere. And then he's like, you do? He's like, nah, I'm not gonna lie, what's your name? So I told him, like, I'm Robin or whatever. He's like, oh yeah, I think I had you on a gram before or some shit. I'm like, yeah, I had you on a gram some years back. Like, you look wild familiar. So me and the friend start chopping it up. So we start talking. From this point on, I'm gonna call the friend clown, <laughs> okay? So now it's me, Nina, bro, and clown, right? So we start drinking, we taking shots, we got drunk, we mad drunk or whatever. So we about to leave. Clown was like, oh, y'all should come back to my hood. We gonna smoke. I think I think the clown and bro was talking about smoking. And Nina was like, where we gonna smoke at? So we pulled up to clown's house, right? So we smoking and we chilling, da da da, we laughing. Cause you know, we drunk cause we went to Rocco's and they smoking, so they high. So we making jokes, you know, we are chilling. I think bro, recorded the bedroom or something like the scenery like of all of us chilling and put it on snapchat and clown's girlfriend saw the snap red flag number one clown's girlfriend saw the snap so she calls clown clown sees her calling and he looks up at bro and he's like oh shit like she calling and niggas is like, oh, answer. So he answers the phone. And some girl is on the phone like, who's in your crib? Uh-uh-uh. Da-da-da-da. And he was like, playing dumb. You know how you know how niggas be. He was playing dumb or whatever. So that was ref like number one. I was chilling in his crib and he had a girl. But I'm not going to lie. We wasn't on nothing. Like, we was really just chilling. But he had a girl. Why you got bitches? Like, why you even pulling up? To a double flex with your mans if you got a girl red flag so i don't know we chilling or whatever now i'm about to go home he was like oh 
you should spend the night with me i'm like i don't even know you like i don't really know you for real all right he didn't really put pressure on it he's like all right at least take my number boom we changed we exchanged numbers so i went home that was the end of that so we started texting i think i followed him on instagram at that point i think he was like what you doing i'm like i'm at work and he was like um where you work and i told him and he was like that's around the corner from my crib we were texting and then one day he was like yeah after work one day you should slide on me i'm like i'll see but as time progressed we were talking more and more and one day i came home from work and he was like what you doing i'm like nothing he's like oh yeah what you doing tomorrow i'm like nothing i'm off he was like you should come see me so i'm like don't you have a girlfriend he was like nah i don't have a girlfriend da, da, da. i'm like all right I wish I would have stayed home. Like, now I wish I would have stayed home. So, I went to go chill with him or whatever, right? We chilling. We smoking. We drinking. One thing led to another. And boom, bam, thank you, ma'am. And then I spent the night, right? When I woke up in the morning, he was like, we were cuddling. And he was just like, I'm really feeling you. Like, you gotta be my girl right now. Like, you gotta be my girl after this. Da 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 da. And I'm just like, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say I was looking at him like weird. But like, at this point, we have, we was already texting to the point where I was getting somewhere. Like, I felt like I like him. But when I, when he was saying all of that, I'm like, oh, he really feeling me. Like, I didn't know. I didn't think it was gonna be like that. To be honest, I thought it was just going to be like, all right, we vibing. We did grown stuff. We cool. Like, we, we just going to be vibing, like, filling each other out. But I'm like, I wasn't paying it no mind because I'm like, that's men be just talking out their ass. He was texting me all throughout the day. He was FaceTiming me. And then from that point on, I feel like since he worked, he lived by my job, I was just going to see him all the time. Like, it was just hella convenient. I was just going to his crib after work and stuff like that. So... Fast forward, I don't know if he officially asked me to be his girl, but I feel like I was with him so much that he was just saying I'm his girl. Yeah, so I brought up the situation where when I was at his house and the girl called, he was like, oh yeah, that was my ex-girl. He was like, that's my ex-girlfriend. Like, the relationship been dead, but now it's really dead because I'm really feeling you and this bitch did this and this bitch did that. She was cheating on me. She was a bum. She didn't work. I took care of her. Like Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Oh my God. Why the fuck? talking all the time he would facetime me he would text all throughout the day he would ask me if i ate he would come get me from work and then take me to his house he would buy me food like he would take care of me you know what i mean so i'm like my man or whatever like this is my man i think the second red flag was when it was like very early in our relationship and he kept saying he loved me you love me love me yeah love you. do you love me i don't know I fuck you. But he kept saying he loved me. And he'd be like, you love me, you love me. And I'd be like, uh, I don't know. Or, uh, like, I would just play it off because like, it's no way this guy loved me this fast. Like, <laughs> I'm like, something is up. And at that point, I did not feel like I loved him. I just felt like I liked him a lot. So I should have took that as a red flag. Like, he was just saying, I love you. I love you a lot. And I was just like, mm. third red flag. He had two kids. Like, <laughs> no, Tina Shay, baby. I know you fucking lied. Two kids. Not by one person. Two baby mamas, two kids. I've never been in a situation with a man who had a baby mother. So, what what number red flag we on? In, this, in the beginning of our relationship, because of the type of hustle he had, he was making money like, like, he was taking care of me. He was giving me money, you know. Let's fast forward to me, right? So he was telling me like May is coming. He's going to Miami. He's going to Rolling Loud with his friend. His friend was the bro. He was gonna go to Rolling Loud with his friend and some other group of his friends or whatever. Me, I didn't think nothing of it. I was just more sad, like, oh, like I might go see my baby for five days. <laughs> like, at that point, we was inseparable like we was with each other every day so i'm like oh i'm not gonna be with you for five days i'm sad so with him, i was with him up until the day he went to rolling loud dropped him to the airport we was texting that whole day he landed the whole next day but as the days passed 
the replies were getting weaker and weaker like he would text me twice a day three times a day and i'm calling him and i'm facetiming him and it might seem like obsessive like damn he's on a trip with his friends let him have fun but like checking in with your girl one time a day two times a day is unacceptable like especially when you're in a whole different state so me the sensitive cancer at i am i was getting like real emotional about it i was really panicking i'm like he probably out there with somebody da 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 da, da. and that's really the vibe i was getting from him because he was posting on instagram but he was not responding to my texts like it was really killing me so and then when he would reply to my text the answers were not the same like i told y'all he was really on me like feeling me every day expressing how much he was feeling me how much he liked me etc and when he was in miami he was one wording me like i'd be like what you doing he'd be like nothing i'd be like why you ain't calling me back he'd be like busy like really one wording like he was not feeling me please ignore the lip gloss under my lip <laughs> for how he used to be so i didn't think nothing of it so i'm like when he come back maybe because he was just having too much fun he was just too busy yeah so he comes back from miami i'm not gonna lie i went to go see him the first night the vibe was good then but from that point on i feel like the vibe was not the same but anytime i brought it up to him he'll be like what are you talking about like what are you talking about uh -uh. his birthday was like the next now nah, i'm not gonna say the next day it was like two days after he came back from miami right so red flag number i don't even know at this point we are six flags i don't know what red flag this is but basically he was telling me how he blew a bag out when he was in miami and rolling loud with all the stuff they was doing he needs to get back on his hustle so that's probably why he was like oh the reason why he probably i feel like there's some distance between us is because he's thinking about making a bag right now basically because his birthday is coming up and the stuff that he want to do for his birthday cool i understand that boom or i guess all the little hustles he was doing he was not making no money like and he had poor money management so basically he would have money and he would blow through it so fast but he always got money again so i guess at this time when he went to miami he blew through his money so fast because he thought he was gonna come back and make the money but i don't know what was going on with him it was not like the money was not making i felt bad because his birthday was coming i was bringing it up like oh what you want to do for your birthday he was like i don't want to do nothing because like my bag is fucked up and i'm like i'm gonna take you out and i bought him a gift or whatever so the night before his birthday brought his gift over i'm like opening he was like oh let me king thank you nobody ever bought me a gift da, 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 da. nobody ever bought me a gift for my birthday da, da, da. you the best girl uh, uh, uh. cool right this is where manipulation come in i feel like from this point forward this man felt like he could just pick me up and drop me off how he felt like like one day he will be in the mood for gonna be with me forever he want to marry me ah, ah, ah. and then the next day he would just be dry responses like i'll be like i would wake up all oh, lovey-dovey he would be run word me and i was just like you're mad confusing bro and then i was every time i pressed him about it like why are you acting like that he'd be like what are you talking about he would keep hinting that he wanted to get me pregnant and have a baby with me and like I would never be no nigga third baby mother like <laughs> no me, sir honey. not me you might have me at second but third 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 so this time around this time his money was back up he was buying clothes i feel like when he started getting his money back up he would hide that fact that he got money to me like he would tell me like i don't got no money but he would come in the crib new and mary's new and mary's sweater new sneakers money he would be on instagram uh uh money fans he came out of nowhere big earrings but he would hide the fact that he had money to me and i feel like he had to hit the fact that he had money to me because he didn't want to give me none but i didn't need him for no money i had a job like so boom so he was driving this little rency all over the city flexing or whatever and and this day i was at work so i felt mad sick so i'm telling him i feel mad sick and i'm like i was supposed to go to spend the night at his house but I'm like, I think I'm going to go home today. But I feel mad sick. So I'm like, can you, since you got the rental, can you come pick me up from work and take me home? Mind you, I told y'all, I don't live close to where I work. So he was like, all right, what time you get off? I told him. He was like, all right, text me closer to that time. 
an hour before the time text i texted him i'm like can you take me home i don't feel good he's like i'm really mad far i'm not gonna lie i'm all the way in the city right now i don't think i'm gonna make it in time da 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 I was so annoyed <laughs> like I don't know if he was really far or whatever the case may be but I was annoyed at the simple fact that like I really don't feel good you could take me home bro like you sh I've been told you I didn't feel good you should have made yourself available to come get me and take me home so I was just annoyed at the fact I'm like you know what whatever be safe brother man have fun I come home I go to sleep around 2 a.m. I just woke up I don't know why something felt weird i woke up and i texted him both of my messages went green so i'm like whatever maybe his phone is dead i lay back down like 10 20 minutes later his mom called me like oh um he just got into a car accident and i got my ass out of bed at three in the morning I, i'm like mm -mm, my man is hurt i'm coming i should be stupid 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 we in the er from like early in the morning i called out of work to be in the er with him all day and so he lost his phone in an accident after that he came out from the hospital i was keeping i was taking care of him basically while he got in this accident he had a sling like he couldn't do nothing he had a sling so um he didn't have no phone we went to tuny mobile um I put him on my line. Biggest mistake. Never put nobody on your line. Don't put your, no, don't don't put nobody on your line. That becomes your responsibility. So one day I'm in his room. He was in the living room on the phone with somebody, and he's like, "Yeah, her jaw is broken. Her rib is broken." So I'm listening to the conversation. So I'm like, "Who is the her, honey?" When he comes back in the room, I'm like, who is the her? And he's like, oh, I my homegirl, she was in an accident. I feel bad. Her jaw is broken. I'm like, what What homegirl? You never told me about no homegirl and no accident. So I put two and two together. And the, the day he got in an accident, he was with a girl. And him and the girl got in an accident. I was so naive. At this point, I knew I was getting played. Like, with everything, I should have been walked away. But I feel like I needed something in black and white to tell me to leave this nigga alone. And I really didn't have no solid proof he was fucking with bitches because at this time he would make it seem like oh i'm always with you you always with me i'm like it's no it's no time to cheat but trust me niggas make time one day i'm at his crib right and i was using his laptop i think because at this time i was trying to get into the school to do what i really want to do so i would use his laptop to do it because i didn't have a computer at the time i couldn't do it on my phone so i had to do it on his computer so he left at the house so he gave me the computer password it was something mass simple I don't know what took over me, but I went on Instagram and I tried to use that password for Instagram. That shit didn't work. So I'm like, okay, I should have just, I should have just let it go there. But there was a devil on my shoulder, like Robin, <laughs> no, you got to find what's in the Instagram. Like you got to find what's in the Instagram. I went to his email, right? I typed in the password. That was the password for his email. I'm like, oh my God, people are so dumb. Their passwords are mad easy and you got the same password for everything. So then I went on Instagram and hit forgot link. And when you forget your, I mean, forgot password. And when you forget your password on Instagram, you can have it set up where they send you a link and you just click the link and the link signs you in to Instagram without putting a password. So I, I click the link and it logs me into his fucking Instagram. I did not think that would work so i was just feeling mad crazy like oh my fucking god are you really prepared to see what's in the phone like what's in the instagram because instagram was his prized possession he did not have facebook he did not use snapchat like that so he was just an instagram ass nigga so i get on the instagram child i was so disgusted by the dms like but <laughs> I was just so disgusted like you know what's so embarrassing it's one thing when your man is cheating on you and it's embarrassing it's another thing when your man is in people dms so it was this one girl who stood out to me because i feel like they was talking a lot i read their dms and he was trying to talk to her whatever whatever she's talking back to him and he was like saying mad corny shit and this bitch was just eating it up like i don't know he was just saying corny shit she was eating it up and he was like let me get your number and she was like no i don't just give out my number um you gotta work for my number da, 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 da. so i'm like who is this bitch talking about some work for my number i go on her page she's a bartender right cool she's a cute girl i ain't gonna lie she a cute girl whatever i'm looking through her pictures this bitch got mad pictures naked like her whole nipples is out her pussy is out her ass is out in my head i'm just like 
niggas gotta work for ass their ass but he needed to work for her number and he was really like oh i'm willing to prove to you that i really want you da, da, da. and i'm just like <laughs> i can't believe i was out here getting played like that i was so embarrassed <laughs> after i kept the, i kept the mental note i'm not gonna lie i kept the mental note of this girl right I kept the mental note of this girl. So one day he left me in the house. He said he coming right back. I look at his Instagram story. Boy is at a strip club. Feel me? So I'm like, he's by the bar. So I'm like, I hope he not at the bar for this bitch. I go check the bitch story. He's at the bar for this girl. So I'm like, okay. That's all the evidence I needed. Because remember I told you, I just wanted to see it in black and white. I seen it in black and white. I didn't bring nothing up to him. But a couple days later, the girl likes my picture. I'm like what the fuck I ain't think nothing of it i'm just like all right as time went on he would spend more time out and he would spend more time in clubs and my whole thing is this nigga is not a club nigga like when i met him he was not going to strip clubs to blow no money on no bitches none of that but he was always in a club and at this point he would never had time for me he was always out side like he would leave me in his crib and be outside and be in the club like i was so dumb but i think i had asked him like you fuck with this bitch like you fuck with this bartender bitch he'd be like no like i don't even know how i got on the gram like we don't fuck around why the fuck you lying why you always lying oh my god why the he don't even know i seen the dms because i never brought it up to him <laughs> it was really hurting my feelings like this was like the lowest point in my life all my friends could tell you i was like i can't believe he's fucking with this bitch like he really fucking with her like he really like her he Niggas be saying they want a certain type of bitch or want to fuck with a certain type of bitch or wouldn't fuck with a certain type of bitch and be fucking with that same type of bitch on the low. One day, we were sleeping, right? <laughs> One day, we were sleeping. I woke up to go to work. His phone was on the counter. And again, the devil was just on my shoulder. And I'm like, look at the phone. I look at the phone, right? It says N. It just said it just said N. I'm it said N and it said like 42, 42 um missed calls. I'm like, who the fuck is calling this nigga 42 times, bro? So I guess the password the the passcode. I don't know. Niggas are so the passcode was so easy. It was the year he was born. I put the passcode in, the message is open. This bitch is writing him like, oh, all the time after a certain time you go missing da, da 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 you go missing answer the phone and i'm scrolling up through their messages and she's like oh saying shit like oh you never bring me to your house you don't take me on dates da, 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 da. like you don't take me out you only come see me when i'm at work and, and then you come to my house after work i'm just like bro my whole <laughs> my whole heart <laughs> reading the thread and in the thread he's like i love you she's like i love you too i'm like oh my fucking god niggas got me fucked up Ooh, niggas got me fucked up not today not the one fucked up Ooh, niggas got me fucked up but i'm not the one this nigga love everybody like you don't even know her you don't even know this girl how you love her like that shit was hurting my heart i was hurt and a whole fight that day and i ended up crying like sitting there fucking crying my eyes out like i can't believe you played me da, da, da. as i was editing the video i realized i left out a part there was a day where i went to his house after being at work all day and he wasn't home he told me he's gonna be home in a few so i was in his house and i got out the shower and then i started looking at the bed because I knew I was crazy, but I knew I wasn't this crazy. And I was seeing a lot of blonde hairs in the bed. I never had a blonde wig. At this point, I never had a blonde wig in my life. like, And I didn't have the blonde wig currently. So I don't know who got this cheap ass 613 hair in your bed. So I started taking pictures. <laughs> I started taking pictures of the hairs in the bed. And I texted to him like, I know damn well this is not hair in the fucking bed. And he was like you're bugging that's not here i don't know what that is but it's not here da, da 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 so i started to investigate 
I started investigating. I went to this girl's Instagram or Snapchat on one of them things, right? I go on the Snapchat. The girl has blonde hair. After looking at it, I'm looking through her snaps. She has a video laying in the bed. At this point, I was so fucking done. Like, I was so done. So I started texting him. I was being hella dramatic. Like, I can't believe you had this bitch in our bed. Well, not our bed, but you had this bitch in a bed that I have to come and lay in. You don't even have the decency to tell me, like, you had a bitch in the bed with her blonde hairs. And the blonde hairs was all in the bed. And God knows what y'all was doing. Like, I really was ready to jump off the fucking roof. I was so done and I was so disgusted. Um, and I sat down and I'm like, Akiva... This nigga is not, he's not it. Like, you've been through way too much. You did way too much shit for this nigga to play in your face like that. Like, first of all, you're spending bread on him. And he was hiding the fact that he was have, he had money from you. Two, he was embarrassing you, texting bitches, being mad thirsty, trying to go to their crib, in bitches DMs. Third, he got in an accident with a whole bitch. Four, he fucking with a whole other bitch telling her he love you, he love her, and he don't even know her. Like, just embarrassing. I really sat there and I realized, like, yeah, it's 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 dead heat. I think I explained that to him. We agreed to not be in a relationship, but we were still like fuck with each other, like talk, like we were still talking and stuff, but we was not in a relationship. Like it was dead. Soon as I stopped, I swear to God, soon as our relationship end, he basically jumped in a relationship with this with this with N, right? cool no problem he in a relationship with n i was hurt i'm not gonna lie but when i was texting him i'm like i don't even care about your relationship just make sure you keep paying that bill because you're on my line and he's like yeah i'm gonna pay the bill i'm gonna pay the bill the first month i'm not gonna lie he paid the bill second month i had to this is, we got in a big ass argument because i called him i'm like bro the bill and he was talking mad crazy like you're fiending i should have never got on your line because you're blunt i'm like bro <laughs> I just need the money for the bill. Like, he was cursing me out. All that. Cool. Cut the phone off. He was texting me like, you a whack ass bitch. You, you cut my phone off. Uh -uh. And I'm like, yeah, because you're not paying the bill. I'm not going to. I'm not going to pay a phone bill for you while you riding around with another bitch. That was not the agreement. You were supposed to pay the bill. Like, I don't give a fuck about what you got going on over there as long as you keep that bill paid. So he's like, I don't even need this phone. I'm like, all right, give me my phone because that's my phone. I don't give a fuck what you put down on it. It's on my line. So he would always be like, oh, I'm about to bring the phone. I'm about to bring the phone and never bring it. So he's riding around with this bitch. Now, at this point, I'm starting to see a lot of weird pages in my views. A lot of pages. Because I think I had this bitch blocked. I've seen a lot of fake pages. So I had a friend that was a mutual friend with this girl. And she would tell me the girl is subbing me. And she would be like, oh, bitches that work at. I'm not going to say. Well, at this point, if you're watching this video, you probably know where I work. But she'll be like, bitches that work at this. Bitches is weird. Bitches is ugly without makeup. Uh -uh, I took bitches, man. Bitches want their ex back. Like, subbing me on the regular. And I used to be so fucking annoyed. Like, <sighs> I was really, truly heartbroken. I was going to work depressed as fuck, sad as fuck. Only because I invested so much time and energy just for a nigga to play me for, like, I was crying every day, like I was so depressed. My friends really helped me get through that shit. Like it was my job had a holiday party. I was crying at the holiday party. Like I was really fucked up. I was emotionally drained and I was just sad and I was just depressed. And on top of that, the bitch, I guess she was I guess he she would see he would still be texting me and stuff. So I don't know if her crazy ass was going through his phone, but the bitch gets my number and she starts texting me. She would text me at weird hours of the night, like, bitch. She would text me at weird hours of the night, like, bitch, you're never getting your man back, da da da, like, weird shit from text freeze, right? I, one day, I screenshot it, I sent it to him. I'm like, if this is your girlfriend, tell her to stop texting my phone. Like, that shit is mad annoying. And he would, he like, oh yeah, I would talk to her. And he would talk to her about it, and she'd be like, that's not me. Like, he would tell me, like, she's saying that's not her. And I'm like, who else is gonna be? Like, who else took my man? Like, who else, how, she, how else would she get my number? Like, so she was texting me off text freeze every day, talking mad shit, popping mad shit, subbing me. The way that she was going about it is like I took her man. Like she was just so mad at me. Like she was so mad at me. Every day she was popping shit, saying she want to fight me. Da, 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 da. She would throw subs. Everything I do, she would throw a sub. I don't even know how she was seeing my story because the bitch was blocked. 
that whole situation was just hella toxic i just want to say the main like the whole situation dealing with this nigga was just hella toxic. It was very depressing. I should have caught all the red flags. Like, I'd be so mad at myself looking back at the situation, thinking, like, how did I even allow this shit to happen for so long and get to this extent and let somebody play in my face? Because I'm way smarter than that. But I take it as a lesson of life. Like, I feel like every relationship you get in is a lesson. Like, fuck boys are going to be fuck boys. Niggas are going to play with you, play in your face. Bitches are gonna play in your face, like if you allow them to. Once you put a debt, when you put a stop to it, like nobody could play you. Or if you put your foot down, or if you start letting you niggas know what you would not tolerate, they wouldn't try to play in your face like that. And I feel like I let this nigga feel like he could do whatever to me and talk to me, however, and treat me, however, and play me, however, and because I gave him so much access to me, and I was still allowing him to speak to me see me and stuff like that whole while he was playing my face and that's why he continued to do it and i'm not gonna lie after we broke up like officially like i stopped talking to him completely i was really hella like hella depressed because i feel like when you get your heart broken or when somebody play with you it really feel like you dying like i really never thought i was gonna bounce back from that i really thought i was gonna die i was crying every day i'm not gonna lie i was anxious i could not sleep i could not eat i lost hella weight i was really fucked up because i'm really like damn like i always compare that relationship to um the tyler perry movie of fall from grace because in the beginning i swear to god it was just so like perfect like i said it was everything i thought i wanted in a relationship and then all of a sudden it just started to just decline like it was just shit back to back like back to back to back to back it was just always something so i'm just so happy that i'm out of that situation right now that nigga has no like he he can't he can't talk to me like he can't he tried to dm me the other day and i'm just like why are you even here like i wouldn't even link you again i don't want to see you i don't even want to run into to you and as shocking as it is i haven't seen him in mad long being that i still work where i work and he lives close i still haven't seen him in mad long like it's just like i'm just so disgusted but once you it's the best part of getting over somebody is like when you finally over them you are able to look back at it and be like ew like what was i thinking in that time like i would never like i can't believe i was really I was really depressed over this nigga all in all but that's the story time i don't know what i'm gonna title this video i know it's probably gonna be a long ass video because I, that's the story about me and my toxic relationship i just want all the girls around here to know like everyone has been dumb for somebody like even when people try to play like they never been dumb because i had people try to play to me like they never ever dealt with the shit that I went through. But let me tell you something. Everyone's going to have a point in their life where they love someone more than they... Not that more than they love themselves, but it feels damn near to the point where you feel like you love someone more than you love yourself. And you're willing to do anything for that relationship. Even when it's not as... It's not what's best for you. I fucked up. I put a man front line of my life. A man that was not giving me that same energy. But I learned from it. Yeah, I was hurt. Yeah, I went through shit with bitches and all that, but I learned from it. I feel like I know how to move. And right now, I'm just so happy in my life. I'm in a happy relationship that's not full of toxicity. And I'm, I'm at the point of my life where I know how love is supposed to feel. And I'm telling you, that was not, that, that shit, that was not love. But anyway, if you like this story time give me a like subscribe to my video and please comment down below what's some more stories you guys want to see